Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to The Bosch Report. Well, as we enter the last few days of 2019, we take a look today at two firsts, First Caribbean International Bank as well as First Citizens Bank for their financial years ended October and September 2019, respectively. Now, both banks would have reported improved performance. Let's take a look at what were the drivers behind that. And turning firstly to First Caribbean International, the bank reported earnings per share of the TT dollar equivalent of just around 70 cents, which was a whopping 72% increase from that 40.9 TT dollar cents TT equivalent in the prior comparable period of 2018. Now, the headline number may be a little bit misleading. Uh, there were some one-offs in 2018 which would have brought earnings down quite significantly. But if we take a look at some of the regular line items, total revenues were up just around 6% from 3.9 billion TT equivalent to around 4.1 billion. Operating expenses increased marginally from 2.5 billion TT equivalent is 2.68. Uh, that credit loss impairment was that significant figure related to Barbados debt restructuring in which credit loss and payments in 2018 were just around 682 million TT dollar equivalent. In 2019, that figure shrunk to just around 24 million TT dollar equivalent. So quite a drastic decline in credit loss and payments there. And overall, net income for the period increased from that $675 million TT equivalent to just around 1.14. Now, adjusting for that, uh, that Barbados debt restructuring figure as a one-off, adjusted net income would have actually been in 2018 just around 1.06 billion TT equivalent uh, compared to the current level of 1.14, which is really about a 7.2% increase in performance for FCI. No major surprise in, in terms of revenues by segment. Net interest income continues to be the, the major contributor to total revenues. Uh, in fiscal 2019, it was just around $2.8 billion TT equivalent or around 70% of total revenues, followed by operating income just up to about $1.2 billion TT equivalent. Now, the, the real news or the most significant news coming out related to First Caribbean in recent times has been the acquisition by the GNB Financial Group part of the Galinsky Group, a, um, a Colombian group, of 66.7 um, or roughly two-thirds percent holding in FCI. Now, the details of that transaction had been, have been released and, that, and the 66.7 the percent stake has been acquired or will be acquired for just a, a, a tad under 800 million US, uh, which puts that at an equivalent price in terms of FCI shares at around $5.08 per share TT which is about 37% below the current market price of $8. The implied market capitalization, therefore, is around $8 billion TT versus the current market capitalization of about $12.6 billion. And as mentioned, GNB is taking a two-thirds stake in the bank. Now, based on the release, this will trigger takeover codes in Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. So an offer, a potential offer to acquire the remaining 8.4 odd percent of, sh of shares held in minority investors' hands is likely to be forthcoming in the next few months. So let's see what shape and form that takes. At the current price of just around $8 per share, again, in terms of market price, FCI trades at a price earnings level of 11.4 times, which is below that banking sector multiple of 14.7 times and offers a trailing dividend yield of around 5.5%, which is above the 3.9% of the banking sector average. Now, based on those fairly attractive valuations, but again, with uncertainty surrounding what that offer price uh, in, in that takeover bid um, will come to investors at Boss maintains a neutral rating on First Caribbean. Turning quickly to First Citizens, and for that fiscal 2019 period, the group reported earnings per share of just around $2.98, which was an 11.6% increase from that $2.67 in the prior year. So quite a, a nice improvement there. Net interest income was up just around 4.8%, and total net income up just 2.7% from 2.2 billion to 2.27 billion. And overall, operating profits were up just around 5% from 991 million to 1.04 billion. A lower tax burden actually incre increased profits for the year by a more significant amount from that 673 million to 751.7 million to that there would account for that 11.6% increase. Again, no major changes. Profit before, tax, profit before taxes for the group continues to grow at just a shade under 4% over the past three years, with retail and corporate banking making up the majority of that profit before tax 
uh, component as well as treasury and investment banking, uh, followed by trust, the trustee and asset management business. Now, at the current price of just around $44.52, first trades at a price to earnings ratio of 14.9 times, which is smack in line with that industry average of just around 14.7 times and at a, a dividend yield of 3.8%, again, pretty much in line, uh, pretty average in, uh, relative to the industry at around 3.9%. And on the basis of fair valuations, both maintains its neutral rating on first. That is for this week's edition. For more information, give us a call at 2 boss 226 Email us at invest at boss or check out our website at bossinvestment.com. And on behalf of the entire Boss family, we wish to you, Trinidad and Tobago, a very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next week. This has been The Boss Report.